If you've ever driven a 30 something year old work van every day for work or for pleasure, you know that the doors squeak all the time. They make noise all the time. And it's because of a handful of things. One of those things is the weather stripping. And the weather stripping on this is quite literally crumbling. Which means every time it rains, you get some water in the door jams. Thankfully, not enough to make it rust, but just enough for it to be annoying. So what we're doing today, is we're gonna strip these off, especially these. I did the driver door like a year ago, and uh, this box has been sitting in my garage for like a year. And I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything with it yet. So today, we can replace these. So just as I was afraid, the material's so old, it's like dry rotted. It's just coming apart. Which means that taking this off is gonna be a huge, huge pain. Cause it's held in with these little tabs. You can see that more clearly on the new piece. And oof, this is gonna be a lot more work than what I bargained for, but that's fine. If you know me, you know I've talked about this van. I've talked about how the guy who owned this thing before me made a bunch of, uh, we'll say modifications outside of the manufacturer's recommendations. And for whatever reason, he decided he was going to glue the uh, weather stripping in, which um, you're not, I don't think you're supposed to do that. Because this looks like it's been replaced. Because this doesn't seem as old as the weather stripping on the door next to it. This weather stripping seems much, much older. And you can see this one is, it's not glued. This one was glued. And I suspect that because this was a flooring van, that's flooring glue that has a lot of this held in, which has made this an unbelievable pain to get out. It's not coming out in big pieces. It comes out in little shreds like this. It, occasionally you get one, one piece. I got this one big piece earlier, but it didn't really come out smoothly. So now I'm taking my pliers and I'm removing the little pins. But a lot of these, I think he glued these in too, because they're not really coming off. They're just breaking. Yeah. All right. Well, I got the old stuff off as good as I could. And if you see, there is so much leftover glue and adhesive and foam bits and I just can't get it off. I tried using a screwdriver, I tried using a razor blade, I tried using a bunch of other stuff. I don't want to use any harsh chemicals because I don't want to mess up the paint. Um, and also I don't want it to be wet when I put the new one on. But I'm gonna get this new one on, see what do. All right, so what I was saying earlier about how this door was glued in, the weather stripping on the door was glued in, this is how it's supposed to go. This is the old weather stripping. I have the new weather stripping lying on the ground. This is how it's supposed to come off. See that? It comes off in one piece, right? Easy, it broke right there, but that's not a big deal. It comes off in one piece, and then you take a uh, pair of pliers, and you pull out all the little tabs. This is supposed to be like a 20 minute job, you know, including your cigarette break. This is not supposed to take that long to do, but genius that owned the van before me, like I said, he made a lot of uh, modifications against the manufacturer's recommendations. He did a lot of real tricky stuff with the wiring that uh, almost led to the van burning to the ground because he perhaps thought that he was the reincarnation of Nikola Tesla. I don't know, something. Actually, no, the reincarnation of Thomas Edison because Tesla was a kind of wireless electricity guy, but that's a, that's a cerebral joke that doesn't even belong on this channel. Anyway, I'll start the time lapse. Having a look at this, this weather stripping on this side isn't even that new, or it isn't even that old, I mean. It's relatively new. Look, all the plastic tabs are white. They're not aged. So this is probably 
the same as this because these tabs are also white 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 and I have to cut a hole in this I think to make it fit on the door because I have to get it behind this and I can't put it on from the other side because the hinges so I might cut a hole right here and make it fit look at that look how disgusting that is look how oily how nasty all that stuff is good news is that I have the solution it may not be the best solution but it is the solution that I have degreaser and I'm gonna hose this thing down I think actually from back to front first and I'm gonna hose it down twice a day every day for probably a week and then we're gonna pull this engine out and we're gonna start looking studying what all is going on with it so it begins the cleaning this engine is filthy and if you weren't here for my introductory video on what all's happening with this buggy um, basically this is some kind of conversion dune buggy I don't think it's a Manx buggy it may be an MP imp or some other thing. This was put together by a Shriner somewhere in Alabama. He had two of these. One was for playing, and then one was for taking on the Shrine Parades. And uh, the guy that I bought this thing from said that he had just done an engine swap on it, and it leaked and leaked and leaked oil. He could not figure out where it was leaking oil from, so he parked it in his garage with the intention of fixing it that winter and, well, you know, life got in the way. And now, after sitting for 10 plus years, I have it and I'm gonna get this thing working, I'm gonna get this thing running. First thing that we have to do is yank this engine out of here because I'm probably gonna have to break the engine down, not fully, but I'm gonna have to break it down well enough to um, make at least a couple repairs and there's gonna be some sort of other changes I'm gonna make like this fan shroud this is the fan shroud that goes in the beetle and you can see these holes there's one on the other side too this is where your heater hoses would go to use in the winter time to warm the inside of your car it just uses heat from the engine it pushes it through a hose and then you just turn it on and it allows the warm air to enter the cabin of the vehicle. But as you can see, there is no cabin on this vehicle. There's no enclosure. So these are useless. And all this does is it makes it so that the engine does not cool itself as efficiently as it should. So we're gonna replace this with one of the solid ones. Um, we're also gonna rebuild the carburetor or replace the carburetor. And I mean, it is just a laundry list of stuff to do with this little beetle here, but we're gonna get it done. And this is one of the very small steps in the way. <laughs> 